Hello and welcome to Steph Talks Trash, the series that explores the intersection of people, profit, and planet in the lens of the waste and recycling industry. I'm your host, Stephanie Valentic, Editorial Director of Waste 360. Today I'm talking trash with Ryan Melser, the CEO of American Battery Technology Company. Can you please tell me a little bit about your background? Yes, of course. You know, my background is, you know, fundamentally in, you know, mechanical and chemical engineering. You know, I've worked for close to 20 years in this type of renewable energy technology development. And what I really enjoy doing is working all the way from a blank page when there really isn't even a concept of a solution to a big challenge, essentially going through the whiteboarding stage, developing early conceptual designs of a system that could address those challenges, then building you know, rigorous physics-based models that really show how a system could address it, and then balancing out that analytical work with empirical work. You know, actually building small benchtop systems that prove out those concepts, and then continuing to build those, going from benchtop systems to larger integrated systems to pilot systems, and then commercializing technologies. So going through that evolutionary pathway is really what I enjoy doing specifically within the renewable energy space. And now for the past, you know, close to 10 years, I've been working mostly in the battery materials processing section within the renewable energy field. Is there anything in particular that interested you in, you know, the resource recovery process and and finding solutions for recovering uh, lithium ion battery materials? Right, so back in 2013 and 14, I was working at a renewable energy research institute in North Carolina and was fortunate enough to win a few grants from the U.S. Department of Energy and some private corporate funding to really start engineering new types of materials that could be used to selectively extract battery materials, specifically lithium, nickel, and cobalt or other large materials that are needed for these types of batteries. And in a similar process, going from a blank page design of how these engineered selective sorbents could operate and then actually modeling the full system and then actually synthesizing these custom sorbents in our laboratory and really scaling up those operations. And then back in early 2015, I I started working at Tesla, you know, on our, our Gigafactory team outside of Reno. And it was before we'd even broke ground on the facility. So it was a very small team at the time, you know, about a dozen of us who just sat in one construction trailer out in the middle of desert. And we were essentially told to design and build the biggest factory in the world to make the lowest cost batteries in the world and to do so without consuming any energy. So it was a really daunting task. There was a very large appetite for risk to really develop first of kind technologies up and down the chain. So for the manufacturing processes themselves, for the utility systems, for the quality control, for the laboratory operations. And it was a really empowering time, really just being able to develop these very innovative systems that were first of kind, that were were high risk, high reward, and then go all the way through the commercialization chain to then build these very large implementations of those systems. But in those early days, ramping up the Gigafactory, we were so focused on getting throughput that we really didn't have an especially high yield. We had a lot of waste at different stages and not just batteries themselves, but the whole manufacturing process. So waste powders and slurries and partially coated electrodes and electrode rolls and partially built modules and all of these, you know, almost one-off types of defects. And because during those days, the types of chemistries we were using and the types of form factors were so new, there really weren't any companies in North America that could sufficiently process those waste materials to make them non-hazardous, let alone to try to recover some value from those high value metals. So after years watching this material really just pile up and having to be shipped to Asia to really try to get it even off the books was just a big void in the market that we saw. So combining different experiences of knowing how to extract these individual elements and seeing all these different types of waste piled up 
you know, myself and a few of my colleagues decided to design an integrated battery recycling process to recover materials from those end of life products, as well as from all those different stages of manufacturing. And not just to recover them for the sake of doing it, but to recover and actually purify them all the way up to the same quality needed to sell them directly back into the battery manufacturing supply chain again, and really creating this closed loop within the US market. Is there anything in particular that you are doing to ensure uh, a circular system within your own processes? Right, a big part of that again is not just extracting these metals and making them up to industrial grade. Mm -hmm. that, that's kind of more down cycling than they'd be sold into more the metal alloying business. So specifically recovering them to be able to sell back into the battery supply chain really helps make it closed loop. And then within our recycling system itself, you know, we have several smaller loops. So this is a largely an aqueous, a water-based system. And other attempts at this really have huge amounts of water consumption in a once-through process. So large amounts of consumption at the front end and then large amounts of discharge of potentially contaminated water at the back end. So when we designed this system, we specifically told ourselves we were going to make a closed-loop water system within our recycling train. And after you know, a few years of analytical modeling and bench scale development, we've now been able to do that. And we're currently building our first you know, pre-commercial scale integrated recycling facility just outside of Reno right now to demonstrate this full system. Where do you feel that the uh, EV industry is currently lacking in terms of uh, resource recovery and, and creating a circular system for its battery consumption? I mean, it's, it's really just at the infancy of trying to implement a closed loop chain. You know, mm -hmm. Specifically in the US, it's relatively far behind. And as people see, you know, a very large number of electric vehicle factories being constructed, a large number of battery cell factories being constructed. But upstream of that, the US still has almost zero capacity for material refining and almost zero capacity for the initial material harvesting. So because of that, these large, cell and vehicle factories are essentially having to import close to 100% of the materials that go into these vehicles. So that isn't sustainable on a security of supply basis. You know, we've seen these supply chain risks over the past two years really makes those factories vulnerable, not being able to source their own feedstock domestically. It makes it more expensive, having to transport them long distances, having to potentially pay tariffs, and it makes it a much higher environmental footprint to have to transport them large distances and then to not have the same visibility of how those different metal extraction operations are happening in other countries. So what challenges and opportunities do you see with scaling uh, your process and your business? I think the challenge is a lot of the big OEMs say, you know, well, there aren't a huge amount of batteries coming off the market now, so we don't need to develop a recycling system. And I, I don't agree with that logic. You know, you don't want to wait until the wave is at your door before you start developing systems to process those materials. So that's why over the past two years, we've been building bench scale systems, integrated pilot systems, and now our pre-commercial facility. So this is a fully integrated factory outside of Reno that takes in full battery packs from the automotive sector, from stationary storage for consumer electronics, goes through our, our deconstruction process, and then actually has our individual metal extraction systems to produce these battery cathode grade metals out the back end. And that's really the level of demonstration you need before we can build what will be order of magnitude, larger factories to really address that wave that is coming. But again, you really need to have proven and mature processes when that wave hits. If you start thinking about it at that time, it's already too late. Do you see the uh, current administration or any legislation impacting the, this segment of the business and resource recovery for lithium ion batteries are handled? I mean, right at the start of this administration, you know, they had that executive order for the 100 day review, mm -hmm. essentially examining all critical materials in the US trying to analyze the current state of the domestic industry. That was a good start, 
just to provide some attention and visibility and some benchmarking. And now in the recently passed infrastructure bill and the currently pending Build Back Better bill, there are quite a few sections about improving infrastructure in the US. A lot of it specifically addresses critical materials and quite a bit specifically addresses domestic recovery and recycling. But at the end of the day, with the speed that we have to move, you know, government support will help, but this really does need to be driven by private industry. And while the very large companies you know, tend to really be focusing on the throughput on the manufacturing side, it's been left up to the, the smaller, more nimble startup companies to really develop these first of kind recycling systems. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. One last question. What does the future hold for American Battery Technology Company? Well, like mentioned, we currently have our first pre-commercial facility under construction right now. So as we go through that physical building construction into the spring, and then throughout next year, we'll actually be installing and commissioning all of our processing equipment. So it's a, a great feeling to be moving from, you know, talking about different operations to actually implementing them and having material and product out the door to directly start addressing these challenges. Well, thank you. Thank you once again. And I look forward to see where uh, American Battery Technology Company goes in the future. Great. Thank you for your time. Thank you once again for joining me for this episode of Steph Talks Trash. For this and other episodes, please visit Waste360.com and don't be trashy.